So guys, it has been a while since we have seen any Shizu Tielemans mirror match on this stream. I think it was maybe only the first round I'm so far. I'm pretty sure it was, yeah. And so. this, is, this is going to be a highly skillful one, because the first one of Dennis versus LeBlanc was really intense as well. So I, I can't imagine how nice this is going to be. Both guys definitely have played a couple of mirror matches over the course of the tournament, and it's time for another. Gabriel Susi winning the die roll and therefore starting it off with Mudora Effect discarding the Kalbak. And now the question is, do you want to mill in this mirror I mean, match? He has to mill. If he starts like this, it means that he does not have any other plays ready here, and he's milling Mudora and Keldo and Scream and Agido. And on the other hand, Samir wow. also milling the Scream, and he also milled Mudora and Keldo. So he has multiple interruptions already on turn zero for himself, and in turn one of Gabriel. So this could turn out to be quite strong. And Samir wants to mill more. He says, "Yep, I want to trigger my Agido for sure as well." Wow, and this is actually quite... This is confusing me because, I mean, maybe his hand is not the best as well, but with this setup, with getting like a free Keldo and Modora, I wouldn't want to trigger Agido because it only gives Gabriel the chance to get into some plays. Because yeah. like, this looked like, like a desperation start from Gabriel. Absolutely, it definitely looks like that. And also... I'm pretty sure that Gabriel Susi is probably on triple tactic talents. And I mean, there's no need right now for Sami yeah. Baka to actually resolve monster facts. Well, I mean, there is a Shiren and Rhino Heart that are being Yeah, low. okay, so you're probably going to resolve either Mudora or the Caldo at some point. You're definitely right. And when I'm checking the list of Gabriel Susi, I actually see that he's not on triple tactic talents. Ooh. Nearly everybody is on this card, but Gabriel Susi has decided to not run it. That's a very, very, very interesting decision by him. He, on the other hand, decided to really max out on the Ishizu package. He is playing triple Agido, he's playing triple Kalbeck, and of course, triple Kaldo and Mudara as well. So all the 12 Ishizu monsters are being played. So let's see how well that turns out in the mirror match. I here. think Agido was the first one to trigger, or like, yeah, Chainlink won. So Zamir is giving Gabriel some cards into his deck that are bad mills. He gave him back a Perlerino. Yep, indeed. And Herald of the Orange Light. <laughs> and so we are still milling. Those, There's another Rhino Heart, Hoffness. Hoffness Look, now Gabriel also has a wow, Shuffle and he had multiple two names. names. And wow. This is now kind of backfiring. Also, we are <laughs> seeing triple see Hoffness. Triple Hoffness on the side of Samir Baka. He wants to mill Tielemann's names here, but he certainly didn't want to mill all of them at once, being the same even. I mean, he can recycle them, and he's going to force his opponent to activate Mudora, probably on this. Gabriel also milled two Rhino Hearts, which can't trigger anymore. However, this is still a valuable resource in the GY, so you can always access the Kaleido Heart. Yep, indeed, indeed. And he just he also milled another Kaldo, speaking of Samir. So yeah. he can use that Kaldo now freely, and he still has one left for the opponent's, or for his own turn, rather. So the Shizu cards could really come in handy here for the grind game. And we know this matchup tends to be very grindy. We've seen games that are taking like 30 minutes or something, just grinding back and forth. You look at the tables, you see both players have a graveyard of 30 to 40 cards already, including the extra deck, of course. And it's really going until the last card in the deck, basically. Yeah. That can definitely happen in this matchup. And I mean, it's, it makes sense, right? Because you can recycle off the resources all the time. So you're going through your stuff multiple times and you just have to outgrind your opponent in the long run. We are seeing a fusion summon already. No Mudora used from Gabriel, so the Kid Colors can actually resolve on Samir's behalf. And the Havnet on Gabriel's side will also resolve, so they are not even stopping the opponent from fusion summoning with the Kaldo and the Mudora that they both have available. That's kind of interesting. Maybe that's kind of a <laughs> French agreement. They said, yeah, we're going to trigger all of our mill effects and also we're not going to use our shufflers. On the other hand, no, Samir already used the Mudora effect. So that's definitely not happening here. But yeah. He has Crime in hand, by the way, the card that is still not <laughs> flipped face down, so we can still see that he has it in his hand. Yeah, okay, but now. now he did it. But look, oh, Sami Baka only running a single copy of Super Polymerization in his main deck, and he, has, and he has managed to draw it in his opening hand, and that could be a really huge factory in the mirror match. He also has one Pot of Prosperity. Indeed, indeed. Also what? one Triple Tactics Talent. He really likes his one-offs here in this list. That is really interesting. I mean, my, it kind of makes sense to the point where some of the cards are hard once per turn. Super polymerization is it. However, 
super polymerization is a big investment. Yeah, and I mean, triple tech talents also being once yeah. per and part of prosperity also. So yeah. it's actually quite logical if you think about it. You never want to see two of them, so why play multiple of it? Just play one of them and uh, go for other good cards that are also very good one-offs, such as Super Polymerization or Pot of Prosperity. I kind of like it. And now at this point, Harven is, is activated as a chain to the Kid Colors of Samir, and we are going to see the Mudora of Gabriel being changed chain to targeting two Kaldos and a Harvness as well. So now Samir will have the opportunity to chain one of the Kaldos as well to take away some resources. Oh, but oh, there's Herald of the Orange it. Light from Samir on the Harvness effect. I mean, no, now, no, 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 this is on the uh, Mudora effect. Oh, of course, yeah, you're right. But I think now we understand yeah. why Gabriel let the fusion effect resolve, because he wanted that Samir has a monster on board yeah. to activate the effect, so then triggering his Harvness in hand. And yeah, we see that Gabriel is just milling one of his orange lights. And I think that Gabriel still has the Merly effect open. First of all, it's going to be Samir resolving an effect. Yes, he is resolving the Kid Colossus effect, I am pretty sure of that. If the Merly activates, then there is still a Keldo. I mean, there is a reason why Samir protected the Keldos in his GY with the Heralds of Orange Light. Obviously, so nice. Herald discarding Herald is not the optimal play, but when you gotta go for it, you gotta go for it. For sure. But it's actually quite funny because we see he has a one-off super polymerization. He only runs two Herald of Orange Light, so he really <laughs> just drew these small percentages of his deck. And uh, I think he drew them in quite timely manner. So I would say this could definitely be the cards winning this matchup here, that Herald of, Herald of Orange Light and also that Super Polymerization specifically. And now it comes down to the preparation of the players, because if you are drawing an unlikely hand like that, the chances are that you haven't really play-tested a lot with this, with this combination, with this exact combination of cards. That might very well be true, but I would say Sami Baka went to the World Championship, and he has been in the European Championship final two times already, so this guy probably is prepared for everything that comes his way. And I mean, Gabriel Susi also <laughs> being quite accomplished, I would say. So, actually, to bring up a topic that we discussed yesterday, three monsters on board of Gabriel, no normal summon. <laughs> true, true. He doesn't even need a normal summon. And now he has searched for the Rhino Heart that can be normal summoned. Now, let's just quickly take out the graveyard out of the monster zone. <laughs> I mean, it's just to, so that you of can course. see it a little bit better. But I mean, the normal summon of Rhino Hut will be quite crucial here because that normal summon will provide him a second level 4 body on the field. He does not even necessarily have to normal summon, by the way. He could also just uh, special summon oh. out there the Kid Kalos. Samir searched for the crime and now discards it. So, what does this tell us about his decklist? Because you would search the Sullig instead, right? I guess so, yeah, because there's no banished Tillamond monsters he could add back with the crime right there. So, kind of an interesting move. He, he must have, I mean, he would still just rather discard the Salik if you have a Salik hard draw in your hand, right? So definitely of somewhat of an interesting decision. And now there is a Magnum root on the Shiren that was sent to the GY with a Rhino Heart. At this point, we don't even know which turn it, whose turn it is anymore. <laughs> it is still turn number one of this game number one, Gabriel Susi still in the driver's seat and I think if Gabriel Susi is able to set up a dweller here this might very well be the best setup he could ask for. Okay so let's take mental But there's a Magna wow, Mood on Magna Sami's Mood side as, as well. Well this is so good it provides an extra body for the next turn and provides a Drizworm in the end phase or a Serenir if he wants to have it. And of course he's triggering the effect to search an end phase. You don't want to miss out on that. And I've seen that a lot over the course of this weekend when watching the Shizu Teal players play. I mean, you're still not going to resolve your own Telemans sure. effect, but you are just getting that Bistil body on board, specifically Magna Mood being exceptionally well, yeah. because you can just search for another Bistil, exactly. it replaces itself in the hand, so you much rather want to have your Bistil resolving than your opponent's. Yeah, and if your opponent also announced the Magna Mood, he will just summon it to replace itself, so... This is an interesting point, and I think definitely the right decision. Yep, oh, so triple tri Perlerino, Hafen, and Salik Mills. Salik doing a lot more than crime in the GY. And Serenir can also trigger if there are cards like Branded in High Spirits. And uh, talking about Branded in High Spirits, 
Yeah, quite Sabre an is actually interesting citing the card. Decision. Yeah, yeah, he's citing in the Red and High Spirits package. I honestly have never seen this in any T-Elements Ishizu list, but uh, he made the decision and he's sitting here in top 16, so it can't no. be too bad to bring in the Blazing Cartesia and the Brendan High Spirits. I mean, it plays around the uh, Bestials. It does indeed, it does. So I could very well see this coming in here for game two, but let's first of all stay in this game number one. We just resolved the middle effect yeah. of Kid Carlos. This is complicated enough for us. Indeed, yeah. And I think we also resolved the send effect of Saronir, sending the Druid Swarm to the graveyard and searching for the Hafnis with the Salik. And I think he already used the Hafnis GY effect, right? So he cannot trigger it to go into another fusion summon. And now we are just going to summon Abyss Dweller. That's what we're doing. Dweller actually already activated. So this turn, Samir will not be able to use effects from his GY anymore. He can, however, chain Kaldo to it. Do you think he should do that? Oh. I mean, there are no cards right now in Gabriel's and GY that really do anything. So I think you just rather keep the resources. Probably, yeah. So he decided to not... I mean, I mean you can chain it to send back the Mudora, actually, so your opponent doesn't have it for the next turn. Also, the Mudora was already used, so this kind of makes sense. I would definitely chain yeah, it to Yeah, yeah, for sure. There is the Mudora, because Gabriel actually decided here to Ooh. not have the Mudora, but... Uh, do not detach the Chiron and rather detach the Mudora. So no. that was quite interesting because it gave Sami the option to even chain his Keldo here targeting the no. Mudora. That tells me a little bit that Gabriel probably wanted that, right? Because he, no. he actually actively decided on detaching the Mudora here. So we are sending back Crime at this point. Honestly, he could have searched for a Salik, first of all. So. That might have been a little misstep. Maybe he didn't think the turn would get this far, but we are seeing something really interesting. The Kit Colors is being sent back to the extra deck. Usually you would think this is a valuable resource for Gabriel, but also this is a valuable resource for... I mean, it's also a valuable resource in the GY because you can summon Rule Colors with Kit Colors and now you can't anymore. So no Rule Colors yeah, for Gabriel. Honestly, time. I would have thought that Samir maybe once that actually to happen because super polymerization on Abyss Dweller and Gruul Colors yes. could be quite handy. And we know he has the super polymerization, but still he decided against it. And I mean, we on the other hand know that he has Kid Colors on his field already. So he could yeah. just use his own Kid Colors and the Dweller to make a fusion summon with the super polymerization anyway. So he definitely has an out of a Dweller sitting on the field there. No, it has to be a Kid Colors uh, and a Telemans monster to the Gruul Colors. He can just go for... Uh, Muddy Mud Dragon with Rhino Heart? Um, oh yeah, you're right. But wait, can't he, can't he Super Poly evade the Abyss, Abyss Dweller in this situation? Yeah, with Rhino Heart together. Oh yeah, I, I mean, that's also yeah. quite good. Not gonna lie, that's also kind of nice. And, uh, and if you like take away the Roll Colors and the Dweller, the Roll Colors just comes back to the field immediately and can afterwards send something else from the field, so... I think it was the right choice to deny the Roll Colors and then bank on having the Super Poly for Rhino Heart and Dweller. Yep, but I don't think the Rhino Heart necessarily is going to stay on the board. Gabriel could play around the Super Poly here by just taking that Rhino Heart from the field and use it to go into his Kaleido Heart. And that Kaleido Heart obviously cannot be used as a fusion material, so that would play around the Super Polymerization that Sami has in his hand. But I'm sure that Gabriel Susi and Sami Bakar are pretty close. So no. Gabriel probably knows that he only runs one Super Polymerization in the main deck. So playing around a singular copy of a card in the opponent's main deck is kind of rough, I would say. It definitely is a tough choice. Now we are seeing Garura on Ooh. field. And we are linking it away together with the Havnis. So this looks to me like he is going to summon out Dark. I mean, he wasn't able to summon out his yeah. own Magna Mood, but now he might be able to summon out the Magna Mood from Samir. Is there? Oh, there is not even a Magna Mood. Nope, and I think that Samir would have shuffled it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would have been a heads up play. I mean, the Magna Mood is still on the board, yeah, yeah, of course. So he's summoning back the Huffness, and that. Let me just double check on the deck list of Gabriel Susi. Is he trying to get into Sprint here, or does he want to go for. Elf. I think he used all of his element effects at this point. Yeah, I think Merle is not open anymore, so Sprite's Sprint would be kind of weird. So it most, likely, it most likely has to be the uh, Sprite Elf line he's targeting here. 
Yep, we're linking away V Dark and probably the Huffness of our opponent. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, he could just get rid of the Huffness with some card effect and then Gabriel would profit off of that. Although, I mean, Sami would profit off of that because it's his Huffness. But yeah, we see the Sprite Elf. Sylvia and Board of Gabriel looks like it's supposed to be the Dweller plus Sprite Elf pass. And oh, he's he has no idea for the Merly or has he? I don't think he has. Ooh, oh, there's a Caldo, the Caldo and, and a And crime and crime again. Not too useful in this situation. Can't add back anything. Nothing has been banished yet on the side of Gabriel because the Magna Mood was chained to his, his own Shiren. If Samir gets to mill a crime, then he can actually add back a Shiren. Yep, that is now absolutely true. That add back effect of crime comes up more often than you would yeah. think, to be honest. With all the bestials around, that is actually quite a common scenario to have a Telemans monster in your banished pile. So that is certainly something that happens a lot. Oh, look, he is getting rid of the Rhino Heart. So maybe he is playing around Super Poly here. What is he going to summon, though? He is it going is to Sprite summon sprint. a Sprite, a sprite, sprint, a sprite do sprint. And we are milling this another is, uh, early. Really interesting. Also, it has not played around the Abyss Dweller yet because there is a Rhino Heart on the side of Samir. True, that's right. But by the looks of it, he hasn't triggered the Merle yet. Look, wow. he is resolving Merle's effect. So the players have it quite easy because they are just marking which effects yeah. have been used already. And Gabriel certainly knew that there is a Merle still open. And now he goes for the Fusion Summon via the effect of the Elements Merle to summon out his Kaleido Heart right here. And now we are paying attention if he gets to send away the Kid Colors or does he play around the Super Polymerization and goes into the Rhino Art. This is a game-breaking decision possibly at this moment. It is really. So Gabriel thinking about it. <laughs> he knows that if he leaves that Rhino Heart on board, he could get punished by that one of Super Polymerization in the main deck, which we know that is in the hand of Sami Baka. But maybe he still cannot afford to play around it because there's so much other stuff that could and be there and there is the Kid Colors. Away Kid Colors because Kid Colors, leaving Kid Colors on the field is so dangerous as well. It really is indeed. Also, this Rhino Heart can backfire its own effect, so it will be banished once it's fusion summoned away. And he has to discard the last card in his hand. I mean, he will draw one for turn, but this will leave Samir on so few resources. Yeah, so even if he has Super Poly here, which he has, it might still not be a winning position, yeah. right? It's kind of interesting here. On the other hand, the board of Gabriel doesn't do too much. Like, the Sprite Sprint not really triggering the bounce effect very often in the T-Elements deck. The Sprite Elf, on the other hand, kind of nice to reborn the Murley, I will say that. But look, there is another card in the hand of Sami. He has a Druid's Bomb now yeah. as well because he resolved Magna Mood's effect on field. So that would be a handy discard or something that could target a hit with Murley. So he definitely has some options here. And I think he has Diviner of the Herald in hand as well, which could be a pretty decent normal summon after resolving Super Polymerization. You can just send a Mudora and then go into Baron de Fleur. This is really interesting because then he can actually pop the Kaleido Heart, and when Kaleido Heart tries to summon itself back, you can just go for Drew's Womb. Yep, that is indeed true. So, it's going over to Samir Baka. Oh no, he wants to think an end phase. Maybe he instantly summons out the Drew's Womb here. Oh, this could mean that we are going to see some Eternal Lady. But no, he draws for turn, and he draws a Shiren for turn, and he instantly grabs the Super Polymerization yeah. in draw phase. We are getting rid of that Abyss Dweller, discarding the Shiren, using our own yeah. Rhino Heart, as you said, and the Dweller from Gabriel Susi to go into the Muddy Mud Dragon right there. Muddy or Mud, Mud Dragon, Dragon of the Swamp, I'm sorry. Really strong if there is... I mean, we know that Gabriel can't have crime. I think he milled it. So if he calls Dark immediately, he is going to get away without getting sullied at all if he only summons Dark Monsters. That's true. It's such a comfortable situation to start everything off by having a Mudring of the Swamp on board already. This is protecting your play so much versus the specific interruption that the T-Element stack is providing um, the... Sullied. <laughs> I was just losing my mind for a second. But now, we have the normal summon following it up of the Diviner. And oh, this looked like a spell to me. Which Ooh. spell could it be on Gabriel's side? Basti, can you check for us? Could it be Heartbeat? It could be Heartbeat, yeah. He's main making one copy of Telemann's Heartbeat. As you should. 
I'm ki I'm kind of liking it too. We saw quite a few Mystic yeah, it Mind decks. Really helps you versus these rogue matchups. Okay, now we are seeing a preemptive Caldo, if I'm not mistaken. So what are you? Oh, she he is going to try and send away or shuffle to the deck, Caldo. Yeah, I mean, and he more just, resources. He just wants to prevent Gabriel from interrupting him. So he preemptively tries to bait out the shuffler that Gabriel has, and therefore he will be free to play after that is resolving, because Gabriel now is forced to chain his Keldo, which he's just doing right there. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Why would you not, Gabriel? And he's going for his own graveyard. What is he recovering for himself? What is he going to put back to the deck for his opponent? There's a Rhino Heart being put back. Fair enough. Maybe he has another tier limit name in his hand, so the mill of Reinhardt would be quite handy. So we're checking the opponent's grave, of course, again. This is an intense game one. It absolutely is. And that Abbas Rabam not being able to resolve its effect really is doing damage here for Gabriel. Because Sami now on his side might very well be able to set up an Abbas Dweller. And it's pretty likely then there to stick. So I think we're chaining Sprite Elf to uh, special summon out Murley. Yeah, by the looks of it, that's a play. And we know that Salmi has the Druid Swarm. But we also know that Gabriel still has a Magna move that he couldn't resolve last turn. So there are a couple of things uh, being able to change chain here. And the thing here is, though, you don't want to resolve the fusion effect, but you rather want to resolve the mill effect of Murley. So just banishing it isn't That is the true, best. and Druid's Worm is chained to this Murley. And now even the body, because it is Samir's turn. He is going for proactive plays. This body can be so useful to him. Does he run? Does Samir play Wallow or Yes, Beatrice? we yes, see Wallow, Wallow, founder of the Drudge Dragons. This might be something that comes up here. One of the new rank 6 XYZs introduced in Darkwing Blast. And such a powerful one it is. Yeah, and Mudora is being sent to the GY by the Herald. So there is no Kelbeck, no Agido action right here. Understandable because it looks for Gabriel as if his field was in a kind of locked position. Now we are just casually changing decks. This is not how this works, guys. We will have to... <laughs> Wait, who, whose deck is whose? I, th I think the red ones are for <laughs> Samir, right? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah. It's all good now. It's all good. They found their decks again. They are smiling as well. It's great to see that both of them yeah. are super concentrated. They are really focused and zoomed in. I zoomed in, but still, they are friends and they are enjoying playing this super cool feature match together. Yeah, and it is a game, so they are supposed to have fun with it. Absolutely. So, so he's now getting rid of Baron his own dragon, but he's what getting a negate card. for it instead, which is the Baron. And you were this one about. is really important. I think there's only a Magna Mood. Oh, we are going for the Wallow. Now we are checking the GY of Gabriel, and this one is really important. This is why he actually activated the Keldo at the start of the turn, because he does want to resolve this Wallow effect. So are there any crazy spells like Triple Tactic Talents that you can set to your side, or do you just want to special summon out a monster? I mean, can he set Pearl Rhino? Because honestly, he Pearl Rhino... be able to set Pearl Rhino. Pearl Rhino could be really good. We know that Pearl Rhino is really strong in the mirror match, so... Getting access to that here is a really, really good option. I think Sami should certainly consider it. Crime could also be cool, I guess. He is also able to special summon out a Magna Mood and then again search for another Druid's Worm or add it back to the hand in the G end phase. No, oh, but oh, maybe oh, we, we just want to go for Zeus for line. Zeus. We are running into the Kaleido Art for a little bit of damage because that Wallow is only on 2400 attack points. So now the big question is, does he run Gaia Dragon Thunder Charger? Uh, I can tell you, extra, expi extra space is a little bit tight no, it is, right? in Teal Mint Ishizu. Therefore, he didn't find space for that. I have to disappoint you. But of course, he's running the Dweller and much rather relevant to the situation, he's running the Zeus, of and course. This makes... Okay, so now the Rhino Heart got destroyed. You mean the Kaleido Heart, but... Yeah, Kaleido Heart. That's an interesting thing. Why did that happen? What did we miss? He was just running over the wallow. Uh, running over it with wo wallow, right? So that's really interesting. How many defense points does Kaleido Heart have? Should be at it's 3k. Three three yeah, it's 3k, 3k. So for sure it has 3k oh, defense. Oh, oh, no, no. Wallow gets attack points. I'm sorry, I forgot that. 
the first sentence. Monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for each card in your opponent's GY. Wow, okay, so Wallow certainly was big enough to run over the Kaleidohard. Something that Sami Baka would never forget. He really knew the first sentence of Wallow, contrarian to us. He, he read his cards. He actually was able yes. to run over the Kaleidohard, and now he can activate the effect of Wallow. And I mean, that was really heads up there by Sami. He got rid of the Tielemans monsters on the board of Gabriel, so a potential Salik there is not going to do any damage anymore. Yeah. That is true, and now Wallow can activate the effect. What can you summon? You can summon Abyss Dweller, however, with no materials, this does not seem too nah. strong. He can summon a Sprite Elf into the main monster zone, which can be good. Oh, Magna Moon oh, is being so he activated. was actually going after a monster, I'm quite sure. He was going after a dark monster in the graveyard of Gabriel Susi, and Gabriel Susi says, nope, I much rather want to take that monster out. I know, he's going after the Diviner in his opponent's graveyard. Interesting. I mean, the Wallow still hasn't detached, right? So yeah. he's not even using the effect of Wallow just yet. So let's see what does this Magna mood do, and does Samir actually care about that? I mean, I, I don't really see why he would care. It could be that Sami just wanted to summon back a level 2 body being the Merly, maybe. And then he would have access to Elf and then bring back Diviner of the Herald would be quite a cool play. But he already used Diviner of the Herald this turn. That's what I was thinking. And also he already summoned out the only Synchro monster in his extra deck being the Baron. So that Diviner doesn't seem like a card he would need here ever. Also, now the Magna Mood can be destroyed by Baron de Fleur and then special summoned to the... Oh, he actually... Used the effect on field, so you could also just negate this right now, yeah. if you want. Ooh, and Havness is activated. And Havness is such a great counter to Baron de Fleur, because when you negate the effect, then you are just going to destroy it and trigger Where it. Where is the Havness? Oh, We're Kalbeck, hitting Kalbeck, Kalbeck, Shiren, Shiren. and Pearl Reno. Wow. What a comeback now. This could definitely be the start of a comeback here for Gabriel Susi. What a grindy game. Still only turn number two of this game right here in top 16. And Sami is checking. He has Shufflers, contrarian to Gabriel. Yeah. He has that Mudora. So every Tielemann's name that got milled there, and it was only one for Gabriel, is getting denied. That Shiren is being put back. But. Garbage Susi milled Kalbeck as well, so he and might get to another Tielemann's name right here. I think he might have gone for a Kalbeck chain one, Shiren chain link two, so at least the Kalbeck is chain blocked from the Baron de Fleur. That's probably what happened. Or didn't he use the effect of Baron maybe? And that was the reason why the Hafnis even could come onto the field? I think he activated the effect to pop Magna Mood. Oh yeah, that makes sense. That's also true. That is definitely true. So, we are shuffling back a couple of cards, and now that mill from Kalbeck is going to be really important here for Gabriel Susi. On the other hand, Samir Baka could also be the one profiting off of it, because his deck is also having a couple of really cool cards he could mill. So let's see what yeah. that mill five on both sides will be bringing for that. Samir Baka has not resolved a single tier element effect in his GY on his own turn. So, we are milling. I'm looking at Shiren, the cards Havnes, of Gabriel. Shiren, Kaldo, Shiren, Mudora, and Agido as Aguido. well. Wow, and two Palerinos on the side of Sami. And but this also, is not a card you want to mill. But he has milled two names as well. The thing though yeah, is, exactly. with two names, those two names get, mid, get met with the uh, good old Mudoro that was milled by Gabriel Susi there. So, not really being the best. And I mean, he baited out a Keldo early on, right? So Mudora for Gabriel is still left here in this turn, so he can definitely chain the Mudora to the effects that are being activated by Sami here. This is a really complicated turn. I mean, you will go for one of those two effects. You can't really go for both. Keep in mind, the negation of Baron should still be in play there, and Wallow also has not activated anything. It's crazy to even think of the fact that he hasn't activated the effect of Wallow yet. <laughs> like, that effect is so strong, and you just rather want to take a little bit of a gamble and let his opponent do a little bit more, just before even using the effect of Wallow. On the other hand, I like it. You let your opponent do everything, you're watching him, and that at the end you can make the best decision by already knowing all the stuff that is in circulation for your opponent. 
So we see Sami is triggering the Shiren. What is Gabriel triggering? Of course, Sami being the one to trigger things first because he's a turn player right here. But what is being triggered by Gabriel? I think that Gabriel or that Samir has used both of his shufflers, right? The Keldo at the start of the turn and mid-turn he went for the Mudora effect. So actually, Gabriel can activate Shiren and Merli. That looks like it is very In much one true. Chain. That usually is not possible with this deck. And it looks like, even though a super powerful super polymerization came down for Samir, Gabriel might still be in a spot to win this game right here. That could be another crazy turn of events. And I think, yeah, I think he tipped on both of them. I think he kind of wants to resolve them both. Also, do you think he's going to resolve Agido as well? Agido, I think that at this point he wants to simplify the game state a bit. <laughs> Yeah, simplify that. Um, <laughs> kind of a tough task, I would say. So he does not activate Shiren. I don't know if this is because he activated the Shiren before. I think this is actually a possibility. And oh, I forgot that Wallow is a quick effect, right? Ooh, he is indeed activating the effect of Wallow here. Oh, and he only uses the effect to detach one, which is again shuffle back one card from either player's GY. And we have yet another shuffler, but it's an Exceeds monster. Yeah, Wallow just being another bestial basically, or another copy of Mudora, another but only one card. Kind of crazy. Wallow really coming in handy in this meta game, and that's why a lot of people are even running it over the uh, Beatrice, and I mean, you would think that Beatrice is better because it actually makes you trigger some of the Tielemans names that you could send with it, but Wallow also super powerful as we just see here. I am still myself not sure if I like Wallow or Beatrice better. I mean, Beatrice can actually save you when you are out of place. It's a tough call, seriously. It's I think not they an both do decision. different jobs. Yeah. Preferably, I would put both into my deck, but there are yeah. so many other things yeah. you would have to put in your deck, as we see on the deck lists. I mean, Samir, he, he's playing the Wallow. He didn't even have space to put in Time Thief Redoer, yeah. and we've seen Time Thief Redoer putting in fantastic work over the course of the tournament already, so already making some sacrifices by putting in that Wallow. So it's definitely rather impossible to run Wallow and Beatrice. I mean, I myself am a, not a big fan of Diviner, so I would actually cut the Baron, and then I would have one more space, but I think it would go to Redoer instead of two rank six, because you never go for more than one rank six. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, of course, you also don't summon four rank fours, but... Yeah, but cool news for you. Gabriel Susi also isn't a big fan of the good old Diviner of Herald. He runs none in his main deck. Does he run the Baron de Fleur, I think? Yeah, he does, actually. So he is a big fan of having two level four monsters plus Herald of the Orange Light. That is certainly true. So, I think we've resolved all the chains that we had to resolve, so it is probably going to be back on Samir after this. The only question I'm asking myself is, is Wallow once per turn? Because Otherwise, he still has another shuffle from the GY open. That's a very good question. If it's not, you can still summon Zeus over it. That certainly is a possibility because he has attacked with Wallow already. He ran over the Kaleido Hut very early on in the turn. And here we are now in main phase two with the possibility to go for the Zeus as well. All of a sudden, this looks really good for Gabriel, by the way. Yeah, and I mean, Wallow for sure is uh, only once per turn, I just double checked. But it almost looks like he passed it back over to Gabriel, right? Because Gabriel really actively is checking his graveyard there. So he actually keeps the GY interruption effect of Wallow over Azus. I can understand that because he has the Baron de Fleur on field. This is not something you want to yeah, send away. Yeah, look at that. It is the turn of Gabriel Susi again. Normal summoning wow. the Mudora. And now the end board or the breaking board of Samir Baka doesn't look that oppressive anymore. He has the Wallow. Okay, that's like a bestial. And then he has the Baron de Fleur. But Gabriel has a couple of options to do to go for stuff. Here. I think the Baron de Fleur still has the negate open. So we are going for a link to summon here into dark. We 
Dark Charmer. And we are also now resolving Mudora. Okay, we're recycling resources here. We're trying to get back one Shiren, one Huffness, trying to maximize the chances of milling good T-Elements names, trying to up the number of names possible to be hit by mill effects. And Sami does not look too happy about this. I mean, his GY is filled with cards, but are any of them shufflers? I think he has banished like all of those already. Yeah. I mean, he, we are at, I think, four shufflers banished already. In the beginning, I was like, really, really thinking that Sami is going to have... There's a Oh yeah, there is a Kelvo. That he's going to have a longer breath in this, because he was starting yeah. to mill a lot of shufflers right from the beginning. But Gabriel was able to just shuffle back some of his shufflers because he was using one and then afterwards he could just shuffle back the others. So that was definitely something working very well for Gabriel here. But yeah, very, very, very intense situation. How is Gabriel going to solve this little puzzle that Sami Baka gave him here? We are using the effect of Keldo, trying to shuffle back our own Hafnus and our Druid Swarm. And now he's considering some cards from his opponent too. Why not shuffle back the Abyss Driller from uh, Abyss Dweller from Gabriel Susi as well? That yeah, would be good a good idea. possibility, right? Good <laughs> Just give idea. him another Abyss Dweller. But it's interesting, Gabriel actually has not decided to shuffle back his Abyss Dweller because he could do that himself. I mean, he probably doesn't see a line where he could end up with two level monster two level four monsters on the board this turn. And when you're not using it this turn, you're probably not going to use it at all during this true. game anymore. Because I think in this turn or in the next one, the game will be decided if Samir Bak has... Oh, three Mudoras used by Gabriel. No Mudoras left for Gabriel. So that means if Samir gets another turn, he will be free from Mudoras. And is there any Kaldos in there? At first sight, I didn't see any Kaldos. And we have already played about 37 minutes in this game one. This might be a time factoring game again. 4,900 life points on Gabriel's side in game one and 8,000 on Samuri's side. So he is looking relatively healthy. But I think, I think that he, he just negated ran... the dark, right? Or did he crash? I, th I think he. I mean, we're, we're writing down life points. So I would be thinking that Gabriel just ran into one of the monsters of Samir just to trigger the graveyard effect of dark. Don't you I, want to activate it before? Yeah, but look, he is searching. He is searching. So, I mean, it is in the graveyard, so it certainly got destroyed. But we're not sure whether it was by battle or by card effect. But look, yeah, it Gabriel lost battle. life points. He just crashed into the Baron, so there's no battle phase anymore for Gabriel. And he's searching himself in Hafnis. And there is a sprite into sprint on the field, and it does not really do too much. There is no battle phase for Gabriel anymore this turn. I mean, what? okay, so he did not crash into the Wallow. That would enable him to go for a Zeus play on his own, by the way. That's true, but the Wallow is probably quite big, isn't it? Because but there are a lot of cards in the but graveyard. But it boosts of the Baron as well, I think. Oh, does it boost all monsters of the monsters? you control gain 110 oh, I mean. in defense for each card in your opponent's GY. Fair enough. But now we are milling for Shiren, and we're hitting Scream, Solik, and Rhino Heart. So. Can he activate those effects? And he Sami will. just sits there. I think he has no cards left in hand, so he really is relying on but on the floor and Waldo being good enough to win in the game here. We also don't know exactly that he hasn't used the Baron de Fleur effect because when you don't I mean when you can't listen to the players talking, then you might not really see one of those gestures with yeah. all of those effects resolving. And now we are seeing the Harvin is being shuffled back. Yeah, Wallow is activated in response to the effect of Tulemans' Huffness, and it will be preventing another fusion summon. And it's crazy in this mirror match, right? With all those Ishizus, with all those Bestials, this, this Tulemans part of the deck is not even really thriving anymore because all those fusion summons are being denied. Oh, constantly. and Gabriel picks up his cards. I think Samir won this one. Wallow and Baron de Fleur are too good to be beaten by Gabriel Susi, so we are going to see a game two. Wow, it is 1-0 for Samir Baka. That super polymerization really was yeah, the clutch. turning point in this match. He got rid of the opponent's Abyss Dweller and therefore was free to play for the whole game. So Samir Baka is on his way to get revenge from Gabriel Susi after losing the finals of 
the European Championship in 2019. He might make it to the top eight. We are seeing a quick look around the oh, crowd yeah. here. People are enjoying the featured match as well as we do. Yeah, exactly. So let's check on the side deck. We said it earlier, Sami yes. Bakar actually is siding in the Brendan High Spirits package. Is that something you would want to side in going second? I can see it, but I don't necessarily would say it's a crazy big impact for your, your deck there. So I'm thinking about what it does apart from playing around Bizdeals, because when you activate it and discard or send to the GY your yeah. tier limit card, then you don't have a monster on the field, so the Bizdeals aren't quick effects yet. True, true. That's right. I like it. I like it. But some other cards that are definitely going to come in here are Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. He really wants to see those close to time. That's definitely something he wants to get there. And then also, he's bringing in another copy of Super Polymerization. We're going one. one by one. Yeah, yeah. He's making uh, the amount of Super Polymerization in his main deck double from game two on now. And uh, maybe he's going to see it again. And then what do we have there? He's also going to double the amount of Triple Tactics talent. Maybe in, in game deck. three he would bring two more copies of those. Who knows? I don't know where they should come from, but maybe. And also, we saw it in our top 32 matchup that our Medolce player was on Impermanence. And Sami Baka also is bringing in Triple infer Infinite Impermanence even. One card that he actually wants to side in thrice. So he values I mean, it a lot. The card is incredibly strong if the monster is not summoned by impermanence. Uh, instant fusion. Yep, yep, we saw that in top 32. That wasn't the best outcome. But let's see what's there for Gabriel Susi. What can he bring in here going first? Ghost Troop and Winter Cherries, certainly only a going second card because you want to have less monsters than your opponent. Gabriel is on some interesting cards there. Go ahead. What, what is coming to your mind there? So first of all, he's playing Skullmark Ladybug, which is a card that was previously used because it gains sure. 1,000 life points instead of the 500 just from Scattershot. Yep, However, yep. it's not as consistent. You really have to hard draw or hard mill it. Yep, yep. Because it can't be sprites printed away. That is true, that is true. Also, uh, he has Psy, same for your, Psy frame for your Gamma. Do you think that is ever coming in going first? I mean, there are a couple of effects that are only activating in a graveyard or in the hand while you have no monsters on board. But do you want to take the risk of having a card in your hand that you cannot use at all after you try to establish your board, after you started establishing your board? It's no. rough, right? Not really. I yeah. would not bring but this. But one card that might be good is there can be only one. But I think that is a card that you would much rather want to side in versus the flow on the restack. You want to have that. It's actually pretty good going first or going second versus Florian de Ries. But he's not facing Florian de Ries right here. He's playing the mirror match, therefore, there can be only one not really a card, I think. I mean, you good. really want to side Floodgates in the mirror match, yeah. apart from cards like Summon Limit, maybe, that really limit your opponent only yep, yep. after you set up your board. So uh, I think that Gaga Cowboy might be a card that he brings, uh, sure. Skullmark Ladybug and Super Polymerization. Oh, he's even siding three of them. So he, after this game, I he could have know. more I than his opponent. I think you want to, we are really close to timeout. So I think yeah. you really want to go for cards that let you play instead of cards that stop your opponent from playing. Absolutely, yeah, you might be right about that. But we are going to see all the decisions that were made when the players are ready for the next game. I think besides that, there's nothing like insane in their side decks. Kind of standard, kind of stuff we have seen yeah. already. So no extraordinary cool stuff that they brought to the featured match. I mean, they probably just tried to build a very consistent list. For that, for that big of a tournament, you also really want to have a consistent list. Sebastian. Yes, please. Which spicy card would you like to see? Oh, I see that the players are getting ready for the game. So let's keep that question for game number two of the top 16 featured match. So, Sebastian, to get back to my question, which side deck card, which spicy card in this format would you have liked to see in a featured match? Hmm, interesting question. I really wanted to see Silent Graveyard, but we saw that in the last featured match from Alexander Schmidt. So, besides that, I don't really know whether there's anything crazy I want to see. Is there anything you want to see specifically? I mean, we have seen so many diverse side decks this weekend. I think it's really hard to pick one card that we haven't seen yet. So, I'm that also, is true. So, 
We are starting it off for oh, Gabriel Susi whiffed. with the Shiren discarding the Rhino Heart. But after that, nothing coming. Can he even trigger the Rhino Heart? Oh, yes, he, he can. absolutely can, discarding the Telemans Merly to summon out the Rhino Heart. And he just, just immediately summons it. I mean, okay, yeah, there won't be a Bestial. Yeah, on the you monster. cannot bestial that. And is there are no bestials in the opening hand of Samir. I can guarantee you that there were a lot of spell cards, but all those spell cards are not going to do anything one minute before hitting the timeout mark. So it looks like Gabriel might be quite free to play here. So it looks like we might see a game three if Gabriel manages to go for a Gaga -ga Cowboy at some point in this turn. We're going for the Kid Colors first. Kid Colors with the Merle and... It's so Sonic funny how Earth. different game, uh, how different games can turn out to be, yeah. right? Because in game one, we, de we actually didn't even really see any fusion summons at the beginning because they were stopped so heavily by all the Kaldos, by all the Mudoras, by all the Biz yeah. And now Gabriel is just starting off quite fresh. He already has performed two fusion summons, so it looks a lot brighter for him. And Sami cannot really interrupt him at, at all so far. And he calls Earth on the muddy mud dragon. <laughs> uh, the mud of the swarm and now goes for the damage of fate dealing 800 damage Ooh, close the before time loves this goes. It. the crowd loves it now timeout is being called we see the tea on the table and Samir Bakar is screaming but looks like that is the game sealer here for Gabriel timeout is being called so we are talking to the judges but I think the situation is quite clear Samir being on 7200 life points and that should mean that we have a game two winner being Gabriel Susi here. And, and yes, they indeed, they are the packing cards their up cards. Absolutely FTK'd in game two, if you want indeed, to say so. Indeed, indeed. So, as you guys should know, in top cut, in single elimination, there's no draws. In Swiss, this would be a very easy draw. But how would we get both of them into top eight? That's not possible. So uh, we want to do it. We want it to have a top so nine, cool. but it's impossible. We will have a sudden death here. Both players having won one game now will bring them to a third. No siding. No siding allowed. And also, it's not the usual procedure that the loser of this last match decides who will be going first or second. We will actually have to roll the die to see who will be having the pleasure to go first here. Yeah. Or do you think you want to go first or second here? What is, the, what is your preference in this specific matchup? Do you think going first here is good? I think it is, right? I think going first is always good. You can go for Dweller, you can maybe get a card to the GY that deals some damage. Yeah. And it's, I mean, Samir is really in the driver's seat here, right? If he starts the game, then he can set up a board, which is impressive enough to beat Gabriel. So we are going I mean, to see that. Yes, soon. on the one hand. But on the other hand, Samir Baka has just decided to go second. So yeah, his main true. deck might be tailored a lot more towards going second. And therefore, he could struggle a little bit when he has to face the situation of going first here. So it will be really interesting to see quick shuffling. And we only had the shuffling process and no side taking. And therefore, the players are already ready. So we go into game three of this top 16 feature match right now. Will be interesting to see who will be the one going first here. <laughs> they're casually waiting for the sign to start the duel. And yeah, look, I think they're with the hand signal signalizing, yep, we gotta roll a die again. And that's what's happening. I think they already did, by the way. I have looked at the screen Ooh. while you were uh, still talking to the crowd. I was getting distracted by the dice roll, and I think that. I can't remember who won. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Thanks for the story, Leo. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but someone won the die roll. So we will have someone who will start the game. Perfect commentary here by my co-commentator, <laughs> so I think it's Samir Leonard starts, Koenig. So we see Terra forming, and oh, there oh. is the spooky dogwood for Samir Baka. I mean, even if he is going first, that's kind of a cool card because it will just stop one turn completely. But yes, Samir Baka is going to go first, starting it all off with the Terra forming here for the almighty. Pearl Rhino. And this is the first time we haven't seen Pearl Rhino milled. This is, I think, the most milled card in the featured matches we have seen this weekend. I would certainly agree we did see that a lot. Which is the Tillman's monster we need here? I think he, he was considering Huffness, but when you go for Huffness, you already have a couple other names. So yeah, 
you would need a starter here in this scenario, and therefore we go for the Rhino Heart. And instead. I think he has the Shiren in hand already, so there are already some extenders. Let's try to find the hand of Gabriel. Let's there is Shiren being activated. Gabriel not doing anything against that. I mean, for example, oh, now Gabriel that he's going second, he definitely didn't bring in the Gammas that you would usually that want to bring in. And oh. Scream and Mudora are being milled. Mudora would be a great mill if he did discard one already, so Keldo would be the preferred Ishizu card from Magnificent Maven at this point. However, he can still go for the Tillman Scream effect to fetch another trap card from the deck to the hand. And it is solid because most of the time when you're going second, you're going to side, side out, crime. out the crime. That happens a lot for sure. He still has the spooky dogwood in hand. That's really because Gabriel cannot afford to give his opponent more life points. So this will yeah. really be a turn skipping card. I think the Spooky Darkwood in this specific situation might actually even act similar like a Maxi for yeah. his opponent because he really doesn't want to summon a whole bunch of monsters when the effect of Spooky Darkwood is applying. So it's kind of a similar um, reaction that might be forced from his opponent there with the Spooky Darkwood. So Shiren is activated. Are we going to see a bestial card here? Shiren now in defense position in the spell trap zone. No, I'm just kidding, obviously. Can it resolve? It looks like it resolves. It seems like Gabriel, Gabriel gave the okay. Yeah, it definitely looked like it. So, yep. Yeah, and now we're taking the Rhino Heart away and we are going to summon out good old Kid Kalos. Yep, there we have her, Kid Carlos using the effect on Summon. Gabriel nodding once more, letting Samia play here quite freely, searching for the Merli, and we know when there's Kid Carlos on the field and Merli in the hand. The most likely thing to happen next is the special summon of Merli and the tribute of Kid Carlos being able to mill eight now while your opponent can't mill anything. So you're really getting ahead in oh, resources. Ooh, there is he Brandon High Spirits actually being sided and going second for him. This is a card that he can actually add back in the end phase this turn. So I don't know if this means that he's, I mean, it probably means that he's going to activate both of those, Merli and the Havnes, Shiren the only one that has triggered so far. Yeah, absolutely. So apparently no response from Gabi Susi. He doesn't really want to do anything. Maybe he cannot do anything. Maybe he has no options in his hand. He really might be sitting there with a full combo hand, Gabriel Susi, because he had to side for going first last yeah. game, and now he might have sided out all the going second cards, and that could really, really be hurtful for him here. We gotta see. So Ga Samir really still considering which effects he wants to trigger here. Also, we see that he hit an Caldo as well, so he now has the combination of Mudora and Caldo in his graveyard. Oh, and but there is a callback from Gabriel. Too bounce the Shiren. I mean, you usually don't want to do that, but probably just wants to get rid of one of the level 4 monsters on board, to be honest. He just wants to avoid Dweller by all costs. Oh, look at how angry this Kalbeck is being summoned in attack position already, and I think we are going to see a roll calls now. That is very, very likely what's going to happen. Yep, he's looking for it. Indeed, Tillemans, roll Carlos hitting the field. So, now we are going to resolve the Merli. Merli can now decide, do I want to go into a Mud Dragon or... That's most likely that going looks to be like Dragon. Mud Dragon. Can't go into Garuro with the Rhino Heart, so... He's double-checking, but yeah, I think he's definitely going to go into the Mud Dragon here. That seems very, very likely. Oh, he wants to use... Okay, we are going for Kaleido Heart instead. Oh, that is also really good play to now shuffle away the Kalbeck because there is already a monster on bottom Gabriel's side, so not giving his opponent any level 4 bodies either. And I mean, Samian knows most likely that Gabriel Susi is siding in triple super polymerization. And even though he was going first last game, maybe there's a chance he sided those in. So you rather want to play around the super polymerization, and this board is successfully doing so. That is indeed true, and now we are having the Pearl Rhino pop the Kalbeck instead of the Rhino Heart, which kind of makes sense. You already resolved the Scream, otherwise you would shuffle back the Kalbeck and pop your Kaleido Heart 
special summon it back and send screen. And looks like after setting ah, one card, we're we going go. to the end phase. We are adding back Brandon in high spirits. So turn number one of this sudden death here in our top 16 feature match game three is ended and it's going over to Gabriel Susi to have his first turn as well. And we are going to see if Gabriel is going to have something to combat this spooky dogwood, a card that gains so many life points in one turn. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, indeed. Just in case some of the viewers don't really know how this sudden death works, could you maybe quickly explain how we are actually going to do that? Or maybe I could actually also take it over. We have the turn zero for Samir that just happened. And then we're going to have three extra turns being passed back and forth. And uh, that is going to be the first extra turn right here, right now for Gabriel Susi. And then after that, there's still going to be two more turns. And after the end, or in the end phase of turn number three, extra turn number three, we're going to compare the life points and see who has more. Wow, and this is such a great mill for Shiren, hitting the Caldo and hitting the Havnis and discarding the Merli. So he can actually, I mean, he heavily plays into Dogwood, right? I mean, he could just be activating Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood here, yeah. yeah. He could have actually, actually done it on the Shiren as well. Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought, but looks like he's, I mean, he can still do it on the Shiren, right? Because the, the Shiren effect is still resolving. No, no, the Shiren is on the field when the cards are milled. It happens at the same time. Yeah, exactly. But but still, you, you no, couldn't you, react you to it yet. So if, if you want to use the Spooky Dog Wood, then you are going to use it now. You use it when the Shiren is announced, no? Let's just double read the Spooky Dog Wood. You can just activate it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I, I thought it really relies on being a monster, oh, on, no, no, on no. having a monster on the field, but you could just not do that. You're right. But maybe Samia wants to keep the spooky dogwood for the last and final turn of the match, and then Gabriel could just have no way to come yeah. back into the game when there is the effect of spooky dogwood applying. And that could really be uh, the ending of it. And Samir tries to just win this turn right now with his Steel Elements cards, or maybe survive this turn with his Steel Elements cards, rather. And that could also be a quite smart move. Maybe he also wants to so show some dominance, saying, I can win without using the Spooky Dogwood. I win with only my Steel Element monsters on the field. That is potentially true. We see that he has Caldo in Graveyard now as well. So Sami has Caldo and Mudora at the moment, and now Gabriel has Caldo himself. And the double Hafnis is obviously not the greatest. We saw Sami Mill triple Hafnis in game one, still being able to take the victory there. But let's see how Gabriel can do stuff here with the double Hafnis Mill in this situation. I think he only announced the Hafnis. Oh, you think he didn't announce the Murley? That is very much true. I mean, he knows there's Caldo, so you probably don't want to activate two effects, you're right. So I think Caldo targeted both the Hafnesses? I mean, makes sense, right? Because you do want to give your opponent some bad mills, and when you are yeah. giving him more Hafness to mill when that card is already resolved, I do really understand why you would do that. Now, the Magnamud was targeted by Samir himself, and now I think that the both Mudoras are being targeted as well. Okay, so this is not the banished pile, this is just the targeted cards for the Ishizu Shufflers. And now we are resolving the entire situation. Merli is in the GY, not being activated. Makes sense to rather activate Hafnis than Merli, because you can always access Merli through Sprite Sprint. But I think once again, Samir Bakar There is still actually... a card, Samir. <laughs> I think once again, so, oh look, and he reveals the Ghost Sister and Spooky Darkwood. He revealed basically to Gabriel that there's one in his deck, but unfortunately enough for Gabriel, there's another one in his hand. But yeah, wait, I think we saw that there's Diviner of the Herald in the hand of Samir. It does look like it a little bit, and I think that once again shows us that Diviner is not really the greatest in this deck. A lot of people have decided to cut this card now, and I think this might be a pretty easy cut going forward, because you have very powerful yeah. normal summons in this deck, and just adding this as a normal summon is not really great. I've seen multiple matches over the course of this weekend where the Telemans player would be popping off, would be doing a combo, and then he would just pass with the Diviner in yeah, hand, and uh, that is just something you can't use. I mean, you can use it if you have a Herald of Orange Light as well in your hand, but that's a very rare occurrence. That is 
that's true. And there is the normal summon of Kaldor, the Sacred Protector. And this this may be just going to be a Baguska Pass. That could also be true. A Baguska Pass would maybe t make this game go a whole lot longer, to be honest. I really don't think it would, because you just need some effects that get Kaldor into the UI or Mudora, and then you can shuffle back your own cards and oh. pop the Baguska via Pearl Rhino. Absolutely true. But Sami is considering to do something right here. Yep. Oh, he's using the Salik. Oh, Salik absolutely makes sense. And he is tributing his own Wilkos. This is not the card you target. He ca targets the Sacred Protector. And this also makes sense because Kaldo, no, Kaldo was activated this turn. Because otherwise, he could chain it as well. So we are tributing the Wilkos. And Wilkos will now be able to special summon itself back and the Rhino Heart can shuffle the Shiren back because a T-Element card monster was sent to the GY via card effect. That is true indeed. So Gabriel is thinking whether he could have a response for that. But that is not going to be the case. We are resolving and of course because the good old rule colors was sent to the graveyard by a card effect, we are going to reborn it once again. Now it cannot use its effect anymore because it's not fusion summon anymore. Still a pretty big beater left on the field. And there's a set one and pass from Gabriel Susi, so that oh, is, is definitely not impressive. Samir now has two big monsters on board, only facing the Caldo of Gabriel Susi, and he also still has the Ghost Sisters and Spooky Dogwood in his hand. So even if he cannot end it this turn, he has a very good backup plan to then just sit on that Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood in the follow-up turn. The attacks deal so much damage. These fusion monsters are even boosted by Pearl Rhino's first effect, I think, actually. No, by the second effect. Yeah. We and are taking damage. Gabriel Susi so far only had to take one loss in this entire tournament. But it looks like Samir Baka might be able oh, to... and in the battle phase, we are going to activate it. Branded in high spirits, we are discarding the Shiren. This looks like there is going to be one more effect. Nope, not at all. Oh, is there... Did he forget to side in... Did what he? happened there? I mean, he has no real colors left in extra deck, so maybe that's why he oh, cannot yes, resolve the Oh, yes, that is the problem. Spirits. Yes, exactly. That has to be the problem here. Yep, so he cannot activate the Raiden High Spirits, but still, it is game, and Sami Abaka takes it! France wins over France, and we still have a very, very competent competitor for France now in top eight, being Sami Abaka, who overcomes Gabriel Susi in a long and crueling match going for all three games. But ultimately, even though he lost the die roll at the beginning, he comes out on top actually took it away from Gabriel. He actually got the revenge for yeah. the European Championship Finals in 2019. And I think he's really happy about how this wow. game went down. What a long and This game, game one was absolutely insane. The other two matches, or the other two games, were a bit quick. Quicker, yeah. But Much this quicker. first game, over like 40 minutes, it was absolutely insane. He broke the board and there were so many comebacks. And after all, the attack boost of Wallow was basically the deciding factor. But honestly, that was one of the deciding factors. But I think Super Polarization was the beginning yep. of it all. Like, Super Polarization was the card that enabled him to break the whole board in the first place. Also, Gabriel had a really bad start. He had to send, I think, Kalbeck or Agido. Yeah, it was Kalbeck, I as think. As the first thing, and then had to mill his opponent as well. And obviously, he's going to profit from that. Yeah, for sure. But when we see that Super Polarization is so good in the mirror match, and you're playing mirror matches all day long because there are so many successful Ishizu Tillman's players, why would you only run one of it in the main deck? Like, don't you think this is a card you always want to see? Are you a fan of only playing one of it, or would you max out on it rather? I think it is kind of cool to only play one. I mean, there are some power spell sets you don't want to see too often, like triple tactic talents. I mean, the super polymerization is, I think, not hard once per turn. No. However, it is still, as I said earlier, a big investment, discarding a card and then having to possibly also use monsters from your field. But Guys, we have a special treat for you. We have a new deck breakdown that we oh. want to show you guys. Let's see it. Top 16 breakdown. The number of totally Shizu Tielemans decks has risen 81% as we just saw in Mirror Match. But there is still 13% Floranderies in there and also 6% Draco Slayer. Translating that into real numbers, that means we still have two 
Florian de Ries players being left in competition and also the one Draco Slayer player with Federico Mikotzi still going strong in the tournament. And I said it earlier, Draco Slayer is the deck that can actually take this event away from Ishizu T elements. And so you know what I said at the beginning of the day? It's going to be Florian de Ries. We both still have our rogue pick and left yeah. in the tournament. And let me tell you something on top of all of that. Florian de Ries is playing Draco Slayers right now in top 16. I think they may already be done, but... Uh, we don't know. Maybe one knocked out the other already, so that is certainly going to be a very interesting question. I mean, um, it's probably, if I would see the matchup in the first place, would be very, very much favored towards the Draco Slayer deck. Yes, and that is because there are many wind monsters, of oh, course, yeah. in the Draco oh, yeah. Slayer deck, so you can actually out the barrier statue. Yep. Also, Magic Spectre Bunbuku is a neat little card. It cannot be targeted and it cannot be destroyed via card effect, so I think the only thing stopping Bunbuku from attacking over the statue <laughs> is the trap card effect and the GY that when your opponent, uh, when you tribute summon another monster, then you can book all the monsters of your opponent. So you would have to use that in the main phase over Bumbuku, and then your opponent can possibly special I mean, summon another monster. This honestly, yeah, that many sounds conditions. quite bad. Yeah. yeah, because you are just booking a Bumbuku, which yeah. sounds like I'm making that up. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> also, the new Magic Specter card, which does not have Magic Specter in the name. However, the first sentence is, sorry, this card is always treated as a Magic Specter card. Says that when you are summoning it, you can search for a field spell and then discard a yep. card. And you know which field spell is really good against Flu Wanderers? Zombie, Zombie World. World. And that is definitely a card that every uh, single one of the Draco Slayer players is bringing. Absolutely. In the main deck, they are usually going for Necro Valley because they are prepared for Ishizu Tier, and that is the best field spell versus Ishizu Absolutely. Tier. And I mean, in the side deck, they then may even bring multiple options, but Zombie World certainly the option versus this deck. So I'm quite sure that's like going into game two and going into game three going to be a hard thing for the Flander East deck because even if you only have that going second, it's still such a big problem for the Flander Reese strategy because we saw that before. People were even siding in. There can be only one going second versus yeah. this deck. If you are able to establish like a permanent effect that stops this deck from playing, it's left there with not a whole they, lot. They can only kick with Empton. And at some point, you will find a way to get rid of the Empton. Indeed. So it might turn out to be quite harsh. And uh, that will be really interesting to see whether Federico Mikazzi won that. As we say, we would be expecting him to win it. But there can always be some bricky hands. I mean, maybe of he course. just has no access to nothing. But uh, judging by his performance so far, I would say that his deck is built pretty consistently. And I mean, we had a quick peek at his deck list already. It looks yeah. great. So I would hope that he could make it into and top eight. We also have something else for you guys. We have oh. calculated the brackets of two special players. Ooh. And if both of these players continue to win, we might actually have a Joshua Schmidt versus Jesse Cotton finale because both of these players were still playing in top 16. Again, we don't know if they won their matches or if they lost, but those were quite... That could be a final. Tense of it, like Beck versus Cotton is a really huge match. Yeah, I mean, Jesse Cotton would have to defeat Erikos Beck first, which is a well, very, very, very strong and well-known player from the Greek community. Let's not disregard the Greek people, because we I just honored did. we just honored the French community by having that French mirror match here in our featured match. Uh, but there's also still a Greek player in there, which is quite accomplished and had success in the past. But somebody that had success in the past, but also just had success in this featured match, is Samir Baka. So, Ed, please interview our top eight contestant, Samir Baka, now. Welcome, guys. Yes, I am here with somebody who's just won that top 16 bout to get into the top eight. Just so you know what's going to happen, we're going to have a quick talk about the duel that you've just seen. Then we're going to have a quick rotating door interview with your top eight. Samir, first of all, congratulations. Talk to us about that game, because it's very difficult to be going up against the mirror matchup. Do you know what to play test for in time? Because we imagine we're going to see a lot of that. Is that extra ruling, the extra few turns, something that you've play tested for? Or are you just having to sort of wing it as it goes? Oh, uh, I little understand. Uh, uh, I much play testing. I, uh, I sleep uh, three hours, uh, three nights just for playing, just for good play testing for this event. And, uh, I really want to sleep after this event. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, you deserve it by this point. Although top eight, so you've done incredibly well. Just going through this, the, I mean, each turn lasts a millennium. So those kind of post-match extra time things yeah. takes a long old time, but you still manage to do it. When it comes into those moments, 
Do you think there's anything else that you can do other than just make sure you side in the right cards and just play each moment? There's a lot of interaction between all the cards, so are you having to just make sure you make no mistakes at all, or is it more than that? Yes, because uh, the first player missed token and uh, he has lost the game on the Calbeck, Aguido. The game is really crazy. And uh, me, uh, I didn't use the name during my term, except during the end phase, because the same situation. I didn't want my opening to proc the chair element. It's uh, the game of Mirage match. It's uh, really, really, really difficult. It's a reason uh, much time for playing uh, on Gap same. And then in the last game, you had the spooky dogwood in hand. So you had a couple of options, and then you ended up taking it. So congratulations, you're in the top eight. Really hope that the rest of the tournament goes well for you. Thank you so much for having this post-match interview with us. I'm going to uh, usher you off this way, because we're now going to get into our revolving door. So first up, we've got Pierluigi Sorrentino. Come on up. How are you doing? You're in the top eight. How are you feeling about it? Uh, pretty excited. Yeah. Hope I can make it all the way. It's been a long old couple of days. We're now quite late on the second day. How are you feeling? Uh, no, I don't really need kicking in. Yeah? Yeah. That top cut adrenaline. Well, best of luck for all of the next, the next couple of matches that you guys have got coming up. It's going to be very exciting. I'm going to let you usher off into your next game. Best of luck. Right, next up, we've got Vincenzo Orofino. Come on up, Vincenzo. Welcome. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Yeah? Yeah, kind of tired, but I know I'm... I'm gonna have to play my friend in top eight, so I'm fine. Yeah. Even if I lose, it's. Have you play tested against your friend before? Yeah, yeah, a lot. So you're feeling confident? Mm, I think it's a bit better, actually. <laughs> well, that's very humble of you. Well, I hope it goes well. Best of luck in these top things. You've done incredibly well to get to this point. You now officially topped YCS Dortmund 2022. Any final words for people before you go into these final matches? Uh, hard work pays off. Hard work pays off. There you go. Thank you very much. Best of luck in your games. I'll usher you off this way. Next up, we've got Joshua Schmidt. Joshua, hello. Last time we saw you was at YCS Utrecht lifting up that trophy. How are you feeling at the top eight in YCS Dortmund? Uh, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I'm also nervous because that is that would be an incredible story to, to win two in a row, but there's still uh, three tough opponents ahead, so I'm trying to do my best and uh, happy either way. But it certainly are. Now, bear in mind, the game has changed a little bit since Utrecht. How are you dealing with the new meta? Uh, I have tried to beat Ishizu here, but I have joined them at this point because um, I haven't figured out a better way than doing that. But I do like the deck. I like the mirror match, so I'm, I'm happy with it. So. Yeah. Excellent. Well, best of luck to you. Maybe we'll be seeing two back-to-back -back YCS wins. Who knows? But we'll find out in the next couple of games. Thank you very much, Joshua. I'll usher you this way as well. Next up, we've got Enzo Duval. Come on up, Enzo. Now, how are you feeling this far into the weekend? Uh, exhausted. I would imagine so. It's been a long couple of days. It was like a 12 to 14 hour day of dueling yesterday. You've made it all the way to the top eight. What are you feeling going into these games? How are you composing yourself? Uh, I mean, it's quite uh, it's a, a, a quite challenging format, but uh, it's fine. I mean, it's only Joshua Schmidt, so I'm gonna do it. Thanks to my French friends, uh, Jamal Afizi. So I, I think I'm prepared. I think you're prepared. Well, hopefully you are. Best of luck in those games. Perhaps we'll be seeing you towards the final. Wish you all the luck in the world. I'll usher you this way as well. Thank you very much for our chat. Right next up, we got Eric Osbeck. Come on up, sir. Now, how are you feeling this far into the weekend? I'm feeling very well and hungry for the tournament. Excellent. That's what we like to hear, someone who's keen to get into this final. Now, you've made top eight, an amazing achievement. How are you dealing with the format? Are you finding it fairly good? Are you managing it? Or have you got your head around it all? I love the format. In general, in general I love tier zero formats because I like playing mirror matches. So I'm very happy with the format right now. So you're prepared for more mirror matches in these final couple of games then? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we'll see you on one of those finals. I'll usher you this way. Best of luck in your next games. Hope it all goes well. Next up, we've only got a couple more. We've got Eddie Eater. Come on up, Eddie. We saw you only a couple of matches ago. Now, how are you feeling after getting that next win? I mean, I feel great. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, I'm really hyped. I, I got way further than I wanted to, so now I'm just you know, taking it as it comes. I mean, a top eight at YCS Dortmund, that's always a good achievement. You never know, though. You've got this far. There's always the chance you can get into the final, perhaps even take home that trophy. Any thoughts that you're trying to just keep as you go into these final games? I just want to stay focused. I mean, at this point, you know, if I win, I win. If I lose, I lose. But I want to just play my best game. That's that's humbling. So hopefully you'll do very well. I wish you all the best of luck in your upcoming games. I will also usher you off so you can get ready for those final couple of rounds. Best of luck to you, sir. And finally, we have Mario Aguero. Come on over, sir. Now, how are you feeling? Uh, really happy because this top is unexpected, but uh, I'm, I'm really confident now. 
Excellent. Now, how have you been finding the format? Have you been managing it all right? Have you had some luck, do you think? Or have you generally been playing quite well against what you've been going up against? Uh, I played quite well, but I, I was expecting a lot of the Arishizu. But I faced everything, like Exosister, Sky Striker, uh, uh, Naturia. So it was a really nice experience. To You've look. had a nice cocktail of different yeah. decks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is the, the uh, epic thing of Yu-Gi-Oh! So. Excellent. Well, hopefully you'll have a good, clean sail through these next couple of rounds. May not be the same level of variety that you've had throughout the rest of the tournament, yeah. but I wish you the best of luck. I hope it goes well. I will also usher you off so you can prepare for your next rounds. Thank you very much, Mario. And goodness me, that is our top eight. You have now met all of them. You've heard some of their keen words of advice for all, <laughs> all of the mindset that you've got to have for this. Very, very exciting to see what happens. Don't go anywhere because we've got top eight, top four, and then our final coming up very, very soon.